What's up, guys? Looks like we're live, and obviously you can see we're we got some multi cameras going on. I'm actually multi streaming to a couple of different channels. I think we've got Amazon on there and um, Facebook, and we're also on on YouTube. So everything should come through the questions here. So, like I said, it's the first time I'm doing it. Hopefully, you guys can hear me. Give me a shout out if you can hear me. If everything's good. From the looks of my equipment, it looks like we have audio and we're ready to go. Thanks for being here, guys. We'll try to make this quick. I'll kind of go over what we're gonna do. So I already have this. Let's click on here. Here we go. All right. I've, I've already, already sprayed, sprayed this. This, uh, this, this is a rear fender um, for a soft tail set that I'm doing. It's been sprayed with the uh, shattered glass. It was clear coated at that point. Um, I did some all of the line graphics on it, and I edged everything out with a solid black with an airbrush. I also uh, put a couple of silver leaf stripes, and I'll kind of um, I'll kind of go in there and see. Uh, see if I can get the camera up close so I can show you that. But um, so I'm going to go ahead and fill up these graph, a few of these panels right here. This one right here. We're going to do some fish scales in here, do some sun rays in these two panels right here. And uh, the back, I haven't decided yet. I'm, I might do kind of like a grunge or a wood grain look. Um, we'll see. I'm going to do a lace on the side. I'm, I'm going to leave these two back, back panels, panels right here. here. Uh, I'm going to leave those because I am going to do some, some water droplet, droplet effect. effect. I'll, I'll do another live on that, but that's a whole other thing. thing. Um, the, the water, water has to dry. You have to have it on the side and stuff like that. It needs to it needs to evaporate and whatnot. But uh, let's see here if I can get a close up. So I did, like I said, I did some silver leafing on this. I'm not too happy with it. I'm happy with the tank. Turned out beautiful. The leaf on the front fender turned out beautiful. And um, yeah, everything turned out good. Let me see. We have some echo in here. Let me. Okay. I think I got that echo fixed. Let me know. I think I got that echo fixed. Like I said, I did some silver leaf on this. Not incredibly happy with the rear fender. So um, if we have enough time in this live, I'm going to go ahead and redo it. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Sometimes it happens. Let's see if I can get a close up here so you can see what I'm talking about. I had a couple issues. See that? So this has been sanded and clear coated. And, uh, you know, it just, there's a couple spots and there's some textures. There's a spot right there. Okay, now, now uh, there was a little bit of texture to the clear coat once I sanded it and I didn't sand it all the way out. And that's pretty much uh, the biggest problem that I had with this. So I'm gonna redo it. It left a little bit of texture, no big deal. We'll just do it again. But for now, instead of risking taping to the, cause I'm gonna have to mask some of this stuff off in order to um, do some of these graphics. And I don't wanna, to, lay my tape on top of fresh silver leaf. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by using some vinyl stencils to create a, a fish scale look. I'll show you how we move from the bottom to the top just by creating a fade using some uh, black airbrush paint. Like I said, I might do, might do this effect in this black panel pretty easy and then I am gonna lay out some lace right here to the side panels so everything's gonna need to be masked up and it's not really that hard but uh, we'll get started here
All right, we're gonna go ahead and do the fish scales to start. So I'm gonna run this eighth inch lime line. Just gonna run it over what we already had there on that line. You can even you can even mask on the inside a little bit because we do have a black fade there, and we're gonna use black anyways. So uh, if you if you're gonna be off, be more towards the inside. Somebody asked Joe Brown, what are your thoughts on uh, curing with a curing IR light? Uh, I have one. I don't use it a whole lot, but uh, I don't see a problem with it. You know, my stuff gets it gets cleared multiple times. So pretty much at the end of every day or every couple of days, whenever I get to a certain point, I just throw them back in the clear coat and they get sanded down ready for the next the next set of graphics, or sometimes you just have to clear something in order to uh, to clear up errors and mistakes. You know, because with paint, you got overspray. I mean, I could not mask enough right here. I could put overspray on there. You know, that's a lot of things can happen. It's pretty much how to how you fix your problems. I could probably use a little bit fatter masking tape right there, but I'm. I'm almost out. Could have used some inch and a half there. All right, so here's this is just a vinyl cut fish kill stencil. What we're gonna do? Take some of this three quarter inch tape, lay it across. Oh, wait a minute. I'm gonna stick a little harder on that. There we go. Transfer it over to the tape. So we got that ready. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to mix up the airbrush paint. Yeah, Kyle, uh, sh shoot me that info. Shoot, shoot me some pictures. All right. These things are great. They're awesome to be able to mix into. These little sticks are awesome as well. I grab a pair of gloves here. It's not like my hands aren't already filthy, but okay. We have Speedo Coat Jet Black is what I'm going to be using. And then I have a, some medium urethane reducer. So this is going to reduce it so it's sprayable. Same thing that's in here, right here. We're gonna mix that about 50-50. Okay, there's straight black. What else we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up the same black we're gonna add some inner coat binder to it, also known as clear base coat. So I'll maybe just put just a you know, I don't know, there's maybe like an ounce of that or so in there, less than that. Mix some of that black base coat in there. So this is just going to dilute it a little bit more to make it not so potent. Reduce it again. Okay. That just makes it so it's not so strong and it gets, gets it kind of semi-transparent, I guess you could say. 
Let's see what we oh I did have some airbrush sizing glue in there. Gonna need to get that cleaned out real quick. The sizing glue is water-based, so I'm able to clean this up with water. And like I said, uh, by the looks of it, I might be able to get to laying out that silver leaf. So if you guys haven't seen that yet, we'll go ahead and do that as well. Okay, I think we're cleaned up there. All right, I'm using a, an Awada Eclipse, HP CS, works really good. That's what we're going to use. I think it has a 0 .05 tip in it. Okay, now that I got that loaded up, make sure, we do want to make sure it's spraying okay. There we go. So yeah, you can see that blend right there. Let's see if I can get this camera just a little bit closer. So yeah, you want to make sure you check the blend right here. So if, if it looks splotchy or um, like it's just not coming out smooth on the edges, like it's not blending out right, you may need to reduce it more. So we're going to we're going to start at the bottom here. And it's important to move to start on the bottom and then move up. That way you're not taping on what you've already done. And then you just can't you can't gauge distance by going down. So start at the bottom. Spray the first one there. And you just move up, move up and over one. Um, I kind of noticed that this paint may need to be reduced just a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, that's better. It makes it a little more transparent and it you can see it's just a lot smoother right there. Let me make sure I'm going straight here. And it's as easy as that. We're just going to keep on just fading it down. Once you start to get the, the stencil saturated, just move to a different side.
just try to stay straight with it. Still going. We're gonna make it. Come on. Whew, I feel like I need a break already. Let's go. The stencils just about had it. Okay. Last one, got it. Whew. All right, you guys have any questions? What kind of airbrush is that? It's an Iwata Eclipse. Thanks, Adrian. Jay Mo, thanks for being here. Charles Lloyd. All right, one thing I do like to do as well is um, I like to put a nice fade that kind of fades into this. I do want to make it uh, darker. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the edge of this and fade that paint into the center. You can see that I'm directing my airbrush away from, you know, getting overspray that way. And I'm just following the inside of the tape line just to get, get it dark on the edges and lighter in the center. Like I said, this is this is black paint that has a clear base coat, inner coat clear in it. So basically, it's black base coat with clear mixed with clear base coat, and then it's reduced with urethane reducer so that it's thin enough to make it spray even. And I hope that makes sense for you. Um, but the clear base makes it so it's not so potent. So it takes more to do less, you know, if that makes sense. I hope that does. But that's looking pretty good there. Maybe a little more fade right here. Maybe a little more right there. Okay. Let's pull the tape. Thanks, Paul. 1060. Appreciate that. Let me know how that image quality is. I know that, so right now I'm signed up with, I think it's called StreamYard. But uh, yeah, so that's why I'm able to have the multi-camera going and stuff like that. But uh, I could pay, let's see, I think I pay like 40 bucks a month right now. That's what I'm, what I'm paying. But if I pay 60 bucks, 60 bucks a month, I'm able to stream in, 1080p which 
I don't know. Does it 1080p matter when you're going live anyways? Because, you know, it never seems as crystal clear as what like a video, an uploaded video would be. But let me know what you think. Maybe 1080p is what we need. Maybe the image is really blurry. I don't know. I'm just trying to make it a better experience for you guys and just try to get the word out, man. I'm trying to help. People can make a living doing this. I have. I've made a living doing this for the last, oh, about 18 years or so. 18 years ago, it's not what it is today, but, you know, the standards are much higher nowadays as they were back then. But it seems like now there's more information that's available to learn how to do it. And it's really not that hard. You break it down. This is... I mean, it looks amazing. It looks like I put a lot of work into this, and, and I have, but it's really all not that hard. All right, you guys are still with me. I'm going to go ahead and tape out the other side. Like I said, I would just do half of this and just show you the half, but I really want to get this leafing done today as well. If we have enough time, I'm going to tape that out once... Once we have the graphics in here and we're going to redo the silver leaf and I'll show you how, how that's done. Once again, just taping out a little bit towards the inside to where I already have the black. All right, three quarter inch tape. Pull off another fish scale here. All right, once again, you missed the earlier side right here. You just start at the bottom. Make sure you're lined up square with the fender. That's better. Aim for the stencil and just let the blend kind of go down. Like, let it blend down. Don't, don't aim for the, the part itself. Aim for the very edge. I'm going to try to blast through these real quick.
Still going. It's working. Like I said, once the stencil gets pretty saturated, you want to move it to a different part and let that kind of dry. They only last so long. Let me make sure I'm staying straight there. That yeah, looks pretty good. Chop that there. About halfway, we're almost there. Still going guys, thanks for hanging in there with me. This is getting intense. I'm breaking a sweat. Almost got it. My back hurts. Woo, a couple more. Got it. Woo. Let's go ahead and blend the edges in. I am literally going to sweat right into this paint. That's tough. Takes a lot of concentration and not easy with a camera. But it's easy. I mean, you guys can see how this is done. It's not, I'm not doing anything that requires you to be an artist or anything like that. I mean, yeah, you have to be able to run some tape and you need to be able to kind of eyeball things to make sure things are straight. But as you can see, it's not hard to do. All right, a little bit more in there. I want to make sure that it matches the other side. That's looking pretty. 
pretty good. A little more there, maybe. Okay. Whew. Let's pull this tape off. Hopefully y'all can still hear me. Now, this was definitely the hardest and the most time consuming of all the patterns that we'll be doing on this live today. So the hard part's gonna be done. And that wasn't even hard, you know, that was easy. Wait till we get to the leaf. <laughs> like I said, I'm still learning at the leaf too, but the last two I did on the tank and the front fender turned out fantastic. I don't know what happened with this one. I didn't prep it good enough. I stuck tape to it when I shouldn't have. It's just the way it goes with paint, you know? Sometimes you just got to redo stuff. It's not that big of a deal. All right. Is that black in the airbrush? Yes, that's Speedo Coat Black. Looks like Fairway's hair. What's up, man? Where can I get that airbrush stencil? You can, uh, it'll be available on Amazon. It'll be a couple of weeks still. Um, we'll have the lace too. That's, that'll be there as well. Do you always lay out your patterns and effects with black? Ever do it with, say, just candy paint instead of create the depths you are looking for? Yes, I do that. Um, I, if I'm going to edge the tape out with a candy, I try to use a darker candy. That way you have some contrast between the flake or the, uh, the glass that's underneath. I mean, if you were to, if you were to, to flake it, tape it, edge it with, say, candy gold, you're not going to have very much contrast. And it's, I mean, maybe it'll look good. I don't know. It's just, I feel like you need contrast between the lines. So if I was to do it with candy paint, I would probably choose a purple or a dark blue or a dark red. And yeah, you can do that. I just like, I like the contrast between black and metal flake and candy because you really don't know what black color is until you have black next to it, if that makes sense. So, so pairing up black next to a metal flake with a candy over it just looks amazing in my opinion. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's get on to the next one. If anybody has any questions, what do you keep the lace down with? Um, I'm gonna use tape and we're getting ready to do that one uh, here in just a second. David in France, they got to go to bed, man. What's up, Dinah? In custom painting and taping, what is a pinwheel? Wow, I don't know what a pinwheel is. Uh, maybe I've heard of it. What's up, Joseph? All right. We're gonna get to it. We're gonna do some more. All right. Uh oh, something's going on here with this thing. Hell yeah. Thanks, Daryl Starling. Man, thanks for the super chat. I really appreciate that. 75 people on here too. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, every little bit helps, man. 
And some of you guys just keep coming back and supporting me. I really appreciate that. Let me get this camera fixed up real quick and we'll get on to the next, next part here. All right. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. We're going to go ahead and tape out this next section right here. Once again, making sure we're overlapped a little bit onto the black. That way we're not messing up our nice solid line here. And in order to make this curve right here, I'm going to use some limeline tape. Once again, I'm just going to mask it up. To prevent any kind of overspray. I mean, it would be helpful to get some inch and a half tape here, but three quarters is all I got right now, so I'm going to deal with it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out some sun rays, and my helpers here. <laughs> So she's going to be able to read me some of your questions. All right. No, we, you can start at the top. We have some questions that people have asked. So um, Ashley, my wife's here, so she's going to, she's going to fire away while I, while I do this. So. Good for her, good for you. Let's get up a little closer here. It looks like your your mic's working, Ash. Is it? Let's hear it. What's in the first question? You got one there? All right, I'm gonna run some sun rays out of here. The first thing I do. So all you need is tape. Any size of tape really that's about this thick or thicker. Um, you're gonna wanna pick a corner. So you can pick obviously one of four corners here. We have this corner, that corner, and these two corners. The key is to, to make sure, once again, just like with these fish scales, is you wanna move up, upwards. If you try say, okay, this is our corner, and you're gonna put your first one right here, okay? Moving up. Well, then you're going to move down and you're going to be taping on top of what you just did and it's, you're not really able to see the distance. So if you were to start, say, in the same corner and you were to start at the bottom and then move up again and then keep going, that way you can see the distance to keep them even so each ray is spaced out the same. Yeah, somebody asked that about uh, curing with a light. I think that's a good idea. Um, it's quicker, especially in the winter time. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this corner right here, I feel. Let's see. So we'll go up. We could do this corner, or maybe we could do this corner. Let's see. I think I definitely like this corner because kind of bursting out both ways from the center, I feel it will look better. So that's what I'm gonna do. 
So I'm using Speedo Coat Black with a little bit of the clear base coat to dilute it a little bit and uh, reducer. I'm using an Iwata Eclipse airbrush. They asked, what was the question? Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. So right now I have uh, about seven, seven to eight layers of clear coat on this right now. So as you can see, I'm aiming for the edge of the tape. And this is where I'm going to determine the thickness. So I want it about that thick right there. Um, you only shade one side and no, I really, with sun rays, I really don't consider a light source at all. When I, with drop shadows, I do. With this, I don't. I use solvent based paint, but I also have been known to use water base. I like them both. I think solvent's faster. I feel like it blends better. Um, but I'm really liking the colors of, of some of the water based Createx colors and stuff like that. I made the stencil. Yeah, the, the fish skull stencil, I made it. It'll be available through Limeline. Uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks or so on Amazon. And then once again, I'm just going to edge this out. So if I was to mess up right now, I would, uh, since it's been clear coated, I can wipe it off with lacquer thinner right now. Say like maybe the, one of those weren't as even as I wanted it to be. I could literally just take a little bit of lacquer thinner on a rag and wipe this right off because this um, layer has clear coat protecting it. And that's kind of the advantage of clearing between layers and uh, working up in layers like, like I'm doing here. So as long as you're spraying the paint slow and you're not like flooding it on all at once, it basically it dries almost on contact. So I mean, right now that's all dry. I just barely sprayed that. Um, taping on it. I mean, yeah, you can still tape on it right now. That's the nice thing about solvent paint. And you just gonna make sure that you have it sanded down and it has a good grit to stick to. Yeah, I, I've already addressed that question, but yes, I do that with darker candies. Yep, that's what I'm going to do right here in a second. I'm just going to, I'm going to lay out this other side. Yeah, I saw that on there. I don't know what a pinwheel is. Maybe somebody else can chime in and let us know. I know what a color wheel is. Well, I use the same compressor for everything, and I have a Harbor Freight two-stage compressor. That's the key, is to buy a two-stage. I mean, some people think that just because you have a big tank, you're going to be okay, but really, you need to have the a motor and a pump that's strong enough to be able to refill it without it dropping down in uh, in PSI while you're working. I mean, it's not that big of a deal when you're using an air sander. It's kind of annoying, but you really don't want your air pressure to drop when you're painting the gun, spray painting, you know? Not cool.
Yes, you could. Absolutely. That was that gold would probably be the only thing that I would spray, only color I would spray over everything because it's not that strong of a color. If you were to spray red over this whole thing, you would lose a lot of a lot of the contrast. And people do it all the time and they're like, okay, well, I'm just gonna get finished up and spray some brandy wine candy to, to finish it all off. And then they're like, where did my graphics go? So keep in mind, if I was to do this in candy red, I wouldn't do it with a gun. I would actually still edge it with black. And then at the same time, after I'm done with the black, I would uh, I'd hit it with candy red with an airbrush. And as long as you're spraying with an airbrush, and you're not piling it on so thick that you're going to lose the detail like with a gun because you're spraying down big particles. What? Yes, I have. I have done water drops and I'm actually getting ready to do it on this. Not today though, because it does take some time. Um, you know, there's a couple of different ways to do it. The way that looks the best is you do it with real water and you let it evaporate once you paint it. Um, this one's going to be a little tricky because it's on on a glass, sh shattered glass rather than on a pigmented paint. But I'm going to do it on this and I think it's going to look great. Say that one more time. Oh, it's really not as much. No, I mean, not as much it, it still will dry, but yeah, with you think anything 60 degrees and under, and you're trying to paint with a gun, good luck. It's too cold, but yeah, airbrush. I mean, sure. You're just going to be cold. So that's when I would take in, a, in a account um, light source. Hopefully you guys can hear me. It looks like, seems like you guys can hear me. Did you hit the mute button? Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, you might want to put that a little closer to you. <laughs> yeah. But what was that question? Was I answering a question right there? Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, I do take an account. I do take an account the. Uh, let me run this up again. The the uh, where the where like the natural light would be. Um, so I would shadow to more towards the bottom of the fender, and then highlight the uh, the other side of the droplet. Or I think it's opposite, actually. I'll have to do a few. And it's been a while since I've done water droplets. I'll actually practice before I even do this. Yes, good question. You do, if you, every time you re-clear, you need to sand it after it's dry. So the next layer of paint has something to stick to. And then it also allows you to smooth it out even more. I mean, because we built up some paint here in order to get that glass smooth in the paint. So um, even though it's not a hundred percent smooth when I first started these graphics, it's okay. Um, as long as you're not really using like a light colored base coat, like I'm using black and candy so you can really get away with it. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. I'm gonna go ahead and fade these edges again, just like I did on the other side. Yes, you can do that. Can I do that? No, I'm not, not that good at a, with a brush. Airbrush, yes. Pinstriping brush, not so much. Yes, I use u pull. For uh, for all the layers, and then when I'm all when everything's all said and finished, I'll use either Sherwin Williams 
or I'll use Tamco as the last layer of clear. So, it, you know, yeah, so they asked if it's going to change the thickness of the fender, and the answer is no. I mean, it's the paint's thick and for paint, but it's not that thick. What brand of paint do you spray? Uh, I spray Speedo Co, House of Color, and then I use some off brands of urethane reducer. Ye yes, you can. But once again, you'd break it down into the, the individual panels. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to spray it right now with an airbrush and try to cover the whole thing. You would break it down into the panel still. And um, what I would do is to make it look better is you would fade the red into the center still. So you would be turning it red, but... Um, it's applied a lot lighter and a lot thinner, so it doesn't wash everything out. Uh, yeah, I have that one right there. That's it's behind us right there, and then I have a shovel head, a couple others. But yes, I have an '80s style paint job on the other one. This one's metal flaked. Um, so yeah. You can only see a little bit of that? All right. Let me lift this up a little bit. Get a little bit closer here, too. No, you're not. Only if you're on screen there. You're good. <laughs> I use 600 grit with a DA sander to sand the clear coat. Um, if you're not good at, at the DA sander, you might want to go with 800 and do it by hand if you're really new because like, you really don't want to burn through what you've done. So, uh, but yeah, 600 is fine. Maybe do it by hand when you first start. How many hours does it take me to do a bike? Like this one has a tank and two fenders. And usually I can get it done in like a week and a half or so. And that's what doing content with it. So that takes me a little bit longer. But I could probably do it faster if I wanted to. I take my time. you would pinstripe it after the fact. After you do all that, you would pinstripe it. Either with a brush or you can pinstripe it with an airbrush as long as you tape it out. I'll, I'll, be, um, I'll actually be doing that. I'll be pinstriping the edges of the silver leaf with an airbrush and uh, maybe I can do another live on that. Uh, well, if the urethane is the urethane clear coat, if it's the clear coat with the candy in it already, you really can't do it. And if that's what they're talking about, you really can't do it that way because your candy has 
clear coat in it and it takes too long to dry so you really can't have an airbrush with it that would be for all over if you were to cover the whole part with a gun um then yeah then i could see you doing that but i mean these doing custom paint jobs like that it takes multiple coats like i've said before so the clear adds up and the uv protection adds up and um, i've really never had an issue with it i mean obviously if you pick a red candy you leave it out in the sun for a year it's gonna fade pink they're right it's gonna fade pink if you don't take care of it um it's just there's there's candies just don't last forever uh if you got a blue if you do a blue candy well if it fades you just got a lighter blue it's not that big of a deal so another thing to think about when you're choosing your colors let's see yeah it's, you're you're working you got to put it on your. Somebody asked what what color candy? Goes best with a gold candy. What color candy goes best with a gold candy? Um, red, ketchup, mustard, right? Gold and root beer brown. It's probably my favorite. So yeah, root beer, house of color with gold. The nice thing is, is you can spray, the, the, with gold, it's such a light color, you can spray it over top of the other colors. So like, say you got root beer brown, you lay that down first, and you spray the gold over top of what you already have, silver, and what you have is root beer brown. It's gonna tint that brown a little bit, kinda making it a gold brown tint, which kinda harmonizes everything, really looks good. Wait, say that one more time. I'm going to try to focus. You, um, well, I mean, usually it would be base coat and I mean, you primer it, you'd base coat it. You can either start the graphics there or you can um, metal flake it and then clear it and then start your graphics for, at that point. Hopefully that answers that question. I'm getting ready to use the mutant crystal effect. One of these days, it's pretty cool. I've never done it though. I've seen it done and I like it. uh somebody's looking to get work done yeah <clears throat> unfortunately <laughs> it's really busy right now so i'm not taking any new customers but um maybe somebody on here might be able to do it or just you can probably do it yourself really yeah um i usually always have a personal project going and I'm currently doing two bikes right now at the same time. Like you, usually my focus just stays on mostly one thing per day, but um, I like to go back and forth because there's dry times and other things like that. Uh, can you polish your vehicle after it's been pinstriped? If it's been cleared, yeah. Uh, if it, you know, I'd be real careful if it hasn't been clear coated. I'm not, I don't pinstripe with a brush, so I don't really know the answer to that question. But I would say no. So, depending on the paint job, obviously. And, uh, but... It runs like something like this going to run between 
$2,500 and $3,000. It kind of depends on, on your experience and what you're able to do. And, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's a good place to start. Say you're going to do a sports strip for somebody, don't do it for under $1,500. Even if you're starting out, just don't do it. Teal candy. Well, I personally, I don't know. I mean, orange. Orange would be the complimentary color, kind of. It's those, yeah, you can use, you can spray through any kind of lace, really. I mean, you just look at it and see what the openings look like and what pattern it has in it. Some lace is better than others. You know, some has more flowers. Others are more paisley. Um, you know, you got ones that look like spider webs. But yeah, there's a lot of different kinds. It kind of depends on what you want it to look like. Some look like tablecloths. Some look like curtains. So out of the airbrush, I'm running around uh, 18 PSI or so. Oh, okay, great. Uh, yeah, you can send them to my Instagram. And if you guys are wondering where to get any of this paint and stuff, it's on Amazon. So you'd be able to, to check the description after this is all done and check out that web page. And it should have most everything that I'm using here today, uh, with the exception of the stencils, which should be out soon, uh, two weeks or so. And uh, but other than that, everything else should really be on there. Yes, I like to do everything at the same time. Yep, that way you can you can be sure that that it it all matches. Um, say that one more time. You have to read it to me. Do you know if there are any other uses for bulldog and even for motor other than plastic? I thought I heard of it being used for other than intended purpose. Um, I I don't use it personally. Um, but yeah, I've just known it for plastics. I don't really paint a whole lot of plastics because I paint Harleys, so it's not, they don't use a lot of plastic. Let's get to turn this this way. J-Mo hooked it up, man, with a super chat. Thanks, man. It's the support like that, that it really helps out. I appreciate that. And like I said, any of the any of the stuff I use is on Amazon. You could click on that link and see what's there. Most of it's all free delivery, and that's how I get most all my my paint now delivered right in. Not with water base, nope. Don't don't hit it with glass cleaner. All right. I think we're gonna move on to some leafing here because I gotta fix that leaf. And I told him if we got done with this and we have time, 
Are we almost out of batteries here? What do we got? We've been on here for an hour. We've got plenty of batteries. Let's do it. Yep, I've heard of Coast Airbrush. Um, uh, and, and the question is, what airbrush would I choose if I was a beginner? I would probably just go with the Iwata Eclipse. Definitely go with the 0 .05 tip, though, instead of the 0 .035. The 3.5 is going to require you to have thinner paint because the nozzle is smaller. And it, it's going to clog easier. So just keep that in mind. I mean, if you were doing some, if you wanted to do some serious detail, like with, uh, like if you were doing some kind of portrait or something, if you were to that point where you were able to do a portrait, then yeah, you probably want to move to a 3.5. But until then, you're, if, you, if you go too small, it's just, and you're new to the game, you might have a hard time. Hell yeah. Thanks, William. Man, you guys are coming through. I tell you what. I really appreciate it. Yep, a chameleon pearl. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of companies are coming out with that. Um, I like to use it. I've used it a couple of times. Um, I haven't used it on like an overall project yet, but uh, I like it. You know, I've, I've done some stamping with it to make some effects that would change some colors to blue, purple, and red, and it's a cool effect. People love it. Customers love it, really. On Cretex? Yeah, no, I wouldn't do that either. You wouldn't even, you don't even really need wax and grease remover once you're in the paint stage. I mean, that's only for when you're first starting. You should be careful enough that once you're painting not to get any grease or anything on your hands while you're touching the parts. Yeah, it might have a 0.35 tip. I don't even know what it has. But yeah, it probably does. Once you once you've done it for long enough, you can just deal with what you have, you know? Like I don't like you don't need everything to be perfect. You're experienced enough to pretty much make anything work. Okay, so if I was to layer it that way, that's not how I do it. I use LimeLine, and it already has the different sizes mixed together in the packet. And then it's sprayable. So that makes it real easy. It has point, point zero, uh, 0.08, let's say point zero zero 0.008 and point zero zero 0.004 are the two sizes that are in the LimeLine. Um, but yeah, say like you wanted to do a point zero two five. And yeah, so you would, you would definitely, well, if you, if you start with the big stuff and then end up with the smaller flake, um, I, I've done it that way. And to be honest with you, I can't really tell a difference whether you lay the big flake on the small flake or the small blank on the, on the big flake. I can't tell the difference, but if I was to choose, I'd probably put the small flake down first then lay the, the bigger flake down later. But like I said, I don't do it that way. But it's just easier just to, you know, pack it a lime line, throw it in clear coat, and that one pack will do that one pack will do this whole this whole bike. It's just easier that way. And also mixing the clear with the with, I'm sorry, mixing the flake with the clear coat rather than with a clear base coat also makes a difference. 
Um, if you're mixing the flake with a clear base coat, it's going to create more texture, making it harder to smooth it out. So keep that in mind too. Use personally, I recommend to use clear coat uh, with the uh, with the flake when you're applying it. All right, we got that side taped off. Like I said, we're we're fixing the silver leaf that's uh, that's on here. I got a little spot I'm gonna need to sand right here real quick. Well, yeah, right on. That sounds great. Um, yes. Yeah, I would do that. Anyway, you can kind of measure it out with a... That's what he's asking is, should you measure it out with a tape line to get it exact? Yeah, I would do that. If, if, you, didn't, if you didn't think you can eyeball it good enough, There was a little bit of texture in this clear coat and I wanted to make sure that I got it out before I laid this next layer of leaf over because I don't want to have the same problem I had before. Uh, yes. Do I spray it on dry? Yeah, all the flake, all the flake I use is dry to start and then I mix it with clear coat, but uh, I don't blow it on dry. And the reason why I don't blow it on dry is because it creates way too much texture. I mean, the way I think the way they're doing it is they're probably clear coating it, um, getting it wet, and then they're blowing it onto the wet clear coat. But the problem is, is when they're when they're blown on, they kind of flop at different angles and stuff like that, making it really textured, and it's hard to smooth it out. Um, so it just creates more work, I feel. I mean, it's easier just to, to start with the clear coat and end with the clear coat rather than trying to build up a bunch of base layers. Dan? Did you say Dan? Hell yeah, Dan. Man, I appreciate you guys. You guys are killing it. No, you don't have to. Okay, the answer to the last half of that question is no, you don't have to. I mean, you do have to wait for the glue to dry before you clear it, but you really need to wait for the glue to dry before you leaf it, even, even before it gets cleared. So you don't want to trap the leaf on top of wet glue. So yeah, make sure it's dry. We're getting ready to do that here in just a second. I'm just making sure that this, this all feels smooth right here because once that lays the leaf lays down on top of this it's going to pick up any kind of texture that it has i don't i not if it's the next day i would spray them with the intercoat clear if i left them for a few days what what he's what he's asking is sometimes um your clear coat uh, well, sometimes your paint candies only, and candies only stay open for so long. And when I mean open, that means that um, the next layer won't stick if, if the base layer has been on there for so long that it's kind of sealed up, I guess you could say. So what you would do is you would throw a little bit of intercoat clear in your gun, spray it over the top, basically kind of re-wetting and rebinding um the base coats with that and uh you know but i've never had a problem i've let stuff sit for three or four days and i've never had an adhesion problem
I'm just going to follow the same line again. Like once, once again, guys, I'm redoing this because I didn't prep this properly before I did it. So I'm paying the price now, which is no big deal. I'm just going to redo it. The tank looks great. The fender looks great. This rear fender just didn't turn out as good as I want it to. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Let me know. Let me know what kind of videos you guys want to see. What kind of problems you have? I'll help you work through them. Um. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the base color that you're spraying it on. I mean, if you're if you're doing a metallic or you have a light color, you may want to consider putting a candy over it. And if you're new to paint and you don't even understand what a candy means or what it is, it's basically just a transparent color. It's like what hair dye would be considered. Like, you know, and if you ever mixed up hair dye before, it's like transparent. It's you can see through it. It's kind of like a candy. It's not. It's not pigmented. Well, I really like their stuff. And but no, I actually own that company. Who did? Who did? Oh my God, Jenny. Ah, uh, Michael. Michael always hooks it up. Thanks, guys. Every one of you that. I mean, I really don't expect it, but I definitely appreciate it. You would, um, hmm, you would sand it down and you would probably reflake that area, I'm guessing. I'd have to see it, but there is ways to fix it. The other way would be maybe where that area is milky, plan out the graphics to where you're going to put maybe some lace on it. Because lace has the ability to, if you have like some problems, like it, like you said, where it's milky or um, say like you burn through or something like that. Well, you could design your paint around that disaster and hide it in lace. So maybe try that, depending on how bad it is. takes practice I know I didn't what was it uh you're gonna want to use a silver metallic base if you're not want to go with a, if you're not wanting to go with a metal flake or a crushed glass like we have here go with a just a, a fine metallic i think that will work that'll work great and it'll look really good still you're not going to have quite the bling in the pizzazz of what this would have but if you're just starting out it's it's a lot easier to start out with just maybe some metallic base rather than going uh Full blown, full blown. Uh, what was I saying? Sparkle. Full blown sparkle. Okay. All right. Let me double check this and make sure it's all smooth. Another thing is you want to make sure there's no hairs or anything like that in it. So I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Grab some glass cleaner.
any kind of particles or anything that lands in the glue, um, it's going to show up. I mean, I don't know if you can see right here. Let me see that. But yeah, right there. You can see there's with a little hair in there. There we go. This camera's doing good. Look at that. Yep, not good. Not what we want. There is ways to fix little stuff like that, but I have I have issues where I taped to it here, messed it up. I have some more issues over here, and then there was a little bit of texture I left when I applied the leaf, um, so it kind of picked up that texture. So there's too much wrong with trying to repair every little area, so I'm just going to redo it. No big deal. So the glue that I'm using is, uh, it is sprayable. Um, it's not available yet. I'm still testing it. Uh, still got a little ways to go to make sure that um, it's doing okay. But so far, so good. It's taken me, like my whole career, I've tried to do leafing, and it's never worked out for me. I've always either um, couldn't get the sizing glue to spray out good enough, or, or I'm sorry, to lay out good enough with a brush. Um, I either didn't wait long enough, or I waited too long. Um, but this was the answer. Um, I spray this down, it goes down, it goes down smooth and it's real quick. I mean, rather than 20, 30 minutes, we're talking about like two to three minutes and then we're already ready to apply the silver leaf and get ready to spin it. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So you can check it out. I'm sure you guys are going to have some questions to so fire away. I'm going to get the airbrush cleaned out here. All right, dump out that black base coat. Make sure it's good and cleaned with all that paint out of there because we are gonna be putting a water-based glue in here. Frank hooked it up. Frank, appreciate it. Thank you for the super chat. Man, you guys are really taking care of me tonight. And um, anything I can do for you, you let me know. Let me, what do you guys need to know? I'm here to help you. Okay. We're going to mix this sprayable glue. 50% with water right there in the airbrush. Shake it up. Um, I would use Tamco or House of Color Silver. You can also use Speedo Coat Silver Base Coat as well. So any of those Speedo Coat, House of Color, Tamco have that um, solvent based base coat you're talking about. All right, we have sizing glue mixed 50 50 with water in the airbrush. And it's spraying out really good. Oh, fine mist. That's what we want. Okay. A couple of things with this is you don't want to over apply it because if you over apply it, it's going to bunch together like water based stuff usually does. And it's going to create a texture. You don't want any kind of texture. When you lay this out, it needs to be really smooth, really thin. Um, and because it's going to pick up the texture of what you leave. So that's why we're going to be doing three to four light coats 
and then it'll be dry and ready to go. So let's do it. Like I said, when I say light coats, we're just kind of grazing across the area where we want it. What color of base do you spray after pearl? Is that what the question is? Okay, what do you spray pearl over? Um, you can spray it over black, you can spray it over white, you can spray it over a color. Um, usually what you do is you mix the dry pearl into a clear base coat to transfer it onto the part. So you have clear base, you add the pearl pigment powder to it, and then you can apply it over something rather than mixing it straight into your paint. So, I mean, if you want like a diamond white color, you'd put it over white. If you want a black with a like a diamond pearl colored pearl, then you would do it over black. Looks good either way. The dry time on the dry time on this stuff that I'm using right now is um between two to three minutes but you need to make sure you're applying it thin super thin i have used one yes i have used one shot paint and i've always had a problem with clearing over it having like it bunch like uh having a reaction so i don't use it I don't really pinstripe, so that's kind of why I don't use it. Yeah, right on, Frank. They are hooking it up today. I appreciate that. Man, every little bit helps. And if you need the paint materials, right there on Amazon. I'm going to finish taping up the center of this because I really don't want to get any glue there. Really worried about it. Is there a, a way to have a raised surface? Is that what the question is? Uh, yeah, some people, what they do is they'll, um, there's somebody in Japan that will put a stencil down and then spray a sandable primer and then they'll pull the stencil off while it's still wet and then it's raised like a filigree kind of a look and then they'll put a gold paint over the top of it to no, a silver paint over the top of it making it look like chrome I'm trying to remember that guy's name custom huh You have, well, I mean, you really you have about 10 to 15 minutes. It all depends on how warm it is in your shop and how much glue you have down. The nice thing about this stuff is if it's not sticky enough, you just lay a little bit more glue. But I'm just, keep, I'm just going with this in my third coat. And it's starting to tack up. No, not custom Z Warrior. I know who that is, though. Boy. Um, use on the three D tin foil. Use thin tin foil, the thinnest you can get, and make sure your edges are pressed down really good. And it does take, you know, a good. Uh, four to five go arounds and clear in order to get it to smooth all the way out if that's what you want. You could leave it textured still. Um, 
It'll be in the same size of bottle that I'm using, uh, two ounces. It's mixed 50% with water, so it's four ounces sprayable. And like I said, it's still getting tested. As we speak, it's getting tested. Um, it's doing really well. Uh, so I'm, I'm expecting by, uh, by next year, early January, that you should see something. I'm going to put the last coat on this. Nope. what the rocket <laughs> my buddy made me that rocket uh isn't he his name is adam too adam at atomic cycles on instagram he cuts them and makes them for me pretty awesome well he doesn't make that one from me for me but he did and we painted it So he's asking if he's going to have a problem with that. Well, I mean, when you're mixing stuff, you always have a chance of stuff going wrong. Or like I said, with uh, one shot, I've, I've had a couple of problems with that. That uh, boiling up on me when I hit it with clear coat. I mean, I probably have an example back there I could show him. But, yeah, I stay away from pinstriping mostly I, I, I do it with an airbrush and with some tape yeah thanks man the foil on a tank yeah I did yep yeah it's a pain in the butt don't do it don't do it Okay, it's the last coat I'm going to put on this, and then we're going to let it tack up. But it's gone. I actually put five coats on this. All right. If it's a real Maserati, I'll do it. All right. Um, my lead time, man. I'm not really taking any any new clients right now. I wish I could. It's pretty busy. But jump on here. Somebody might be able to do it. <laughs> That's a dumb question. Come on. You, you just do what you want. It's all good. Someone said, do you use heat lamps for an oven before you do I don't know. I usually don't. I don't usually use neither of those. If I'm in a pinch, I'll use my UV lights. But I'm never really in a pinch, though, so... All right, this is starting to tack up. One thing is if you if you sprayed it so thick that if you touch it and it strings up, you've done it wrong. You don't want it. you don't want to apply that much. It's just tacky enough. Um, I mean, there's just a slight tack to it. It doesn't take much to to make this stuff adhere. All right, my hands are a little clammy. Let's get this. When you're laying down the leaf. You want to try to get it as smooth as possible when you start. 
That way you don't wrestle with it later. So you don't want to start like I'm starting right there. See, that's terrible. We're getting rid of that. Get this in a little bit better position. My hands are clammy. This is not easy. There are some um, tools that you could use that go along with this. I'm getting rid of that one. This is not really, okay, here we go. You might need to lower that. You want me to lower it a little bit? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to pull it. There we go. All right, you just want to make sure you're overlapping it just enough. Pressing down the sides. And once again, not all leaf is spinnable. And I've kind of found that out within the last three months of doing this and trying to perfect it. I've got a lot of different brands. Some spin great, some don't really spin at all. So, uh, yeah, make sure you're getting the right leaf. Oh yeah. Oh, right on. That's the way to be. Good on you. All right, we're just plugging away at this. What's up, Caden and Oliver? I didn't say. Man, I'm focused right now. Once again, it's just stuff that I've been testing. Um, it will be Lime Lines Leaf. Uh, we went through, I think, six different brands. And uh, this is the one it looks like we're going to go with. Just enough so that it's overlapped. Last little bit right there. Okay. There's that side. Yeah. 
able to do that without so much waste, or is it inexpensive enough to not matter? Uh, it's it's inexpensive enough to not matter. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think this was like, I think leaf. This is imitation silver leaf, so it's fairly inexpensive. I mean, once you get better at it, maybe you can save some, but, you know, I mostly just try to get it to apply as smooth as I can when I first start. We're still going here. Do you mostly go by slight contrast to the paint of the vehicle? Uh, I guess we have to reword that question because I'm not sure what he's trying to say there. See how I missed a spot right there? I'm going to put a little pat some in there and we'll roll that out once once we get to that point we've got a few more to lay out here are you pressing down hard on the leaf during the initial application or lightly and then harder when you come back with the roller uh, i'm pushing down pretty hard i'm being smooth with it to make sure i don't hit it with my nail or anything but uh but yeah it will i will roll it down fairly hard once it's all laid down mostly i'm trying to really trying to give it get it into the grooves of the edges and then i just leave the excess coming off because i'll press those down later and when i mean later i mean like right here in a second because we're almost there someone said you're liking that leaf roller you tested out on your last life. Yeah, we're getting ready to use it here. Okay. All right, the roller right here. You can see how that's kind of taken out the creases. And uh, it's really important to make sure you just push it all the way down because when you go to spin it, if there's any air gaps or anything like that, it's most likely it's just gonna break and cause a tear, which you don't want that. See how that just smooths out those wrinkles. And then we'll 
we'll dust it with a cotton ball right after we get done with this. Someone says, who makes the roller? Where exactly can I order one? Uh, we'll have the rollers. All this is going to be coming out early next month, next January. And someone said, if it's black, you paint red and white. Or if the vehicle is white, it's all personal preference it's a uh, it's hard to say uh, usually if I don't know about a color scheme I'll paint something uh, with it so I can kind of tell what it's gonna look like okay that's pressed down I'm gonna grab this old cotton swab and one thing you got to really be careful with is don't hit your nail or anything on that. You just kind of want to go at a circular motion. Should probably have a new one of these, but I don't. It's okay. We'll make it. And you see that's just kind of dusting it off. Don't want to go too hard. Just kind of graze it. what this is doing is taking away the overlap and it's kind of giving it like a burnish to it and we'll do this again we're just kind of initially getting the overlaps blended together and it's kind of making it all uniform looking and just barely kind of grazing across it not pushing too hard Okay. All right, I think we're ready to move the tape on this. I'm gonna start by moving, removing the masking first because I do have those couple of fine line tape lines that border the edge right there. I'm gonna go ahead and wait on that. I'm not gonna pull those quite yet. Uh, this is an imitation silver leaf. Once again, I'm just pulling the masking tape right now because the fine line that I have edging this, you want to pull it off a certain way to make sure you're getting a, a clean of an edge as you can. And I'll show you that just here in a second. Let me get the rest of this off here. Okay, so if I was to repair this, um, I would clear it first. It would go through clear coat, and then I would fix it on the next layer of clear coat. But yeah, you would, uh, you would blend it in. You would just fix the error, tape, up, tape it up, and blend it in. We're almost done here. 
we just got to pull this tape and we're going to put some spins in it. We'll show you how that's done. Some engine turn. It's pretty much the best part, really. It's the funnest part. So you got to stick around for that. They're black. Everything on this is black. Since I did mix a little bit of uh, intercoat clear with it, uh, it does kind of give it a little bit of like a a hue of a bronze, I guess, a black bronze look. Okay, can they see this right here? Let's... All right, so when pulling the tape, you want to kind of pull it back on itself. And it's kind of common sense, but... I practice on metal for sure. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't practice on glass unless you're pinstriping. All right, we're going to break out the roller one more time. We're just going to make sure this is all rolled out. Just kind of gets rid of the creases. And it flattens it out for a good spin. All right, that's looking good. I'm going to go back one more time. Someone said, should you have a warm climate when working? Yes, for sure. Yep, 70 degrees. At least. Is that just a cat cloth? No, it's just a, a big piece of um, cotton. cotton ball. It's a bigger cotton ball. You can use a brush. We'll have a brush that does this rather than a cotton ball, but um, you'll see that come out around the same time. Okay, so that's all burnished. So not only does it get rid of the edges and cleans up the edges, it uh, kind of gives it all like the same kind of a look you know these were multiple pieces that laid on top of each other when they were overlapped but uh you know rubbing them down like this kind of burnishes it and turns it all into kind of one strip all right we ready to 
spin this thing. Let's do it. It's the last thing we got to do. Whew, it's getting warm. All right, so we have, these are made by um, Spunleaf, Spunleaf on Instagram. It's just, uh, it's an engine turning tool, one inch. It has a little foam pad here that kind of gives it a little bit extra give. Um, and then it has a piece of 5,000 grit. So, and it seems like the one inch works out great with that. So we're gonna go ahead and start right here. So when I start the spin, I like to start, you know, all, I, I go clockwise and then I like to have the whole rotation of, of my uh, wrist. Basically I just do the same thing. I try to, try to mimic the same thing all the way through to make it even. So let's see what this looks like. Giving it about, you know, three quarters of a turn. You can see what that first one did. That looks fantastic. Yeah, that. Yeah, you kind of have to have the right angle. Maybe over my shoulder over here. Yeah, try over here. Oh, yeah. And still leaving just the center right there. So we're going to overlap just a little bit. like that and it doesn't really matter if you've if you don't turn it exactly straight it doesn't really matter it still looks good the pressure I'm putting on this just kind of a medium pressure you can always spin it again if it's not quite spun enough It's not really like a one and done kind of thing. Once you clear it, you can't spin it again. Whoa, Ooh, that's looking great. You got a good angle on that? That's looking fantastic right here. A little less than a 50% overlap. That way you still have a little bit of the center spin. And then he said, someone said, you say, you say spin it again. Are you saying spin that whole section again? You could, you can literally start again and just spin it again. Like, but you want to match up what you already have. Start in the same direction and do it again if you feel like it needs more of a turn. Or if you're new at it and you don't want to press that hard because you don't want to break it, but. Like if you go back to re-spin one, does it mess up the pattern on the one following it? It's hard to tell. You can, I go back all the time and just hit one here and there, and it's, and you really can't tell the, the overlap. So, yes, you can do that.
Oh, my hand's getting tired. We're still going, though. Come on. We're getting it, though. We're almost there. It's looking great. Keeping the spins even. The overlap the same. You just get into a rhythm where you're just spinning the same way, the same pressure, same overlap. And if it's off a little bit, it don't matter. You can't tell. There. Woo. We got it. How's it look? Yeah, you can see those spins much better than what we had before. No tearing. Oh, yeah, round two on this was was much better. All right, we have any final questions? Thanks for everybody that hooked it up with the super chats. That was freaking awesome, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, we'll give you one last look at this. But uh, good stuff. So... Uh, Probably Saturday morning, I'll do another live. We'll do some water droplets on the side of this fender and uh, maybe show you a couple other techniques with, with the lace. We didn't quite get to the lace today. I really wanted to get the leafing on there so we can get this into clear coat. But um, yeah, any other questions? We can kind of finish this off with any other questions you have and then that'll be it. Okay. Gonna do anything with sides? Yeah, with the sides, we're going to do water droplets. So Saturday morning, water droplets and lace in the two side panels. Yeah, somebody asked, the, uh, I'm glad somebody noticed. I did notice when I was doing this. He's probably talking about that one line right there i forgot to cut yep i did notice that but uh easy enough fix i'll fix that before it goes into clear there's a little bit of black there but good eye where did you get the hard stencil you need? uh you can find that on the amazon link it's a wood grain stencil uh what paint is used for the sand swirls um that's the same black base coat that i've been using a little bit of clear base in there yeah the fender is all various shades of black but it's all just black it's because it's blended uh, not all of it is is uh has the same concentrate and the amount of paint on it making a blend uh, before you clear, you have any extra careful wiping? Be, yeah, you have to be careful with the with wiping the silver leaf. Um, definitely don't put any tape on it. That's the whole reason why I kind of had to redo it. Um, there, I mean, there might be a few blemishes here and there, and uh, you know, once it's clear coated, you could tape it off, and you could fix little areas in the leafing um, later on once you're finished. But like I said, I like to clear it. Well, that way everything's kind of saved and protected before I fix anything. Yeah, William. Yep, I share what I know. I appreciate that. 
All right, guys. Well, it's been uh, over two hours, and I think we've had over 100 people here sometimes. So appreciate you being here. Um, I'll see you on Saturday morning. Thanks.